Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be answering a uh, viewer question about um, what they need to do to be able to license Windows Server properly on their hardware as far as the, the number of core licenses that you need. If you recall a, a little while back I did an introductory video and I'll uh, put a link that will appear in the upper right there if, if you want to check that out that is a basic explanation of how core licensing works for just the Windows Server product. I'm not, not talking about SQL Server or Exchange or, or anything like that just the the Windows Server product. And so I've uh, s since I've made that video I've had a few questions come in you know, like here's my scenario this is the hardware that I have what do I need to buy license wise and so I figured I'd do a follow-up video with some um, some example hardware and show you how to go through the process of figuring out the number of cores that, that you would need to license and what type of uh, license packs that, that you would need to purchase for that. Before we dive in, I want to remind you that if you enjoy the content of the video or find it useful, make sure you click like. Also subscribe and ring the bell when you do so that way you can be aware of when new content comes available and don't hesitate to share this with, with anyone that would um, that, that would find it helpful when they're trying to figure out how to do their licensing for Windows Server. So let's jump right into it and go through some examples of how to figure out the licensing that you need for Windows Server. So the first thing I want to mention are the minimum requirements with licensing for Windows Server. And again, this is just Windows Server, not dealing with SQL Server or Exchange or anything like that, just Windows Server. Um, all physical cores of the machine have to be licensed. So whether that is a tiny little machine that has a single processor with a single core up to some behemoth with, you know, 10 processors or I guess for a little do um, order, orders of two there. So maybe like 16 processors with 32 cores each and it's just ridiculous. All of the physical cores, the physical cores have to be licensed. The other caveat to that is every processor has to have a minimum of eight core licenses. And then another caveat on top of that is every server, like the full full hardware, I realize I misspelled licenses. I gotta fix that. That's gonna bother me. There we go. Um, the full hardware you have to purchase a minimum of 16 core licenses for for the entirety of the server so with a lot of um, your more powerful servers running into these minimums is, is not going to be that of, of of a thing you're you're going to be buying beyond the minimum licenses but the first two examples i wanted to show you here um this this dell t340 and again i just went to um, Dell.com clicked on servers and, and threw some some configurations together of, of things that, that someone might might actually get this is this t340 here that, that I did this is their most beginner of beginning line um, tower server I did just like the, the default stuff and it comes with a Celeron processor one processor with two cores all right well so you would think hey I just need to license two cores. No, we're going to run into our minimums here. Uh, first of all, a processor, you have to purchase a minimum of eight core licenses for that. All right, so we have a single processor. So no matter how many cores per processor we have, um, we're going to have to purchase eight core licenses for that processor. And then there's the second part of you have to have 16 core licenses per server. So even though we purchase eight core licenses to match the minimum for the processor, the overall server, you have to purchase a minimum of 16 core licenses. And so that's why I have in my little column here, core licenses needed, even though this is a single two core processor on this Dell T340 server, to properly license Windows Server, you will be buying 16 core licenses for Windows Server, whether it's Windows Server Standard or Windows Server Data Center, probably with something like this single um, processor with two cores, you're probably not going to be running um, Data Center on that. But regardless of what you run, you will need to have 16 core licenses. Now, way back when, and when I say way back when, it's not too far back when because core licensing in the whole history of Windows licensing schema is relatively new for Windows Server. Um, all you could you always bought in packs of two 
So like you couldn't buy three core licenses. You had to buy packs of two. So that would be obviously eight two packs or now uh, apparently in this this I, I didn't realize until I was doing a little bit of research for the video and going to Microsoft site and downloading their um, their licensing sheet you can now buy packs of 16 as well so a single 16 pack will get you the minimum licenses for a for a, a server so good old Celeron G4900 on the Dell T340 we have to buy 16 uh, core licenses to properly license Windows Server on it. Now, um, remember there's a difference between Windows Server Standard and Data Center as far as the number of Windows Server VMs that provides you. And with Standard that, that you can run two um, Windows Server Standard uh, Windows Server VMs on this Dell T340 box if we buy our 16 core licenses. If you wanted to run four VMs you would need to purchase another Windows Server Standard license for that box, which means you would need to purchase another 16 core licenses because for Windows Server Standard, all of the cores are licensed and all the physical cores are licensed. And so for this box, a single to properly license Windows Server Standard once, you will purchase 16 core licenses. To license it again to be able to get four VMs, you will purchase another 16 core licenses and you would keep doing that if you need to add more VMs and then that's where you start doing your math to see when it makes sense to uh, to run data center rather than um, standard but the core license count does not change between standard and data center let's say that you had uh, well I, I really can't use use the hey let's stack more data center licenses as a scenario because you would never do that because data center gives you unlimited VMs Anyway, so our next example, um, this is a Dell R740 XD, and the option I chose for that was a single Xeon bronze processor. Now this is beefier than the Celeron. It's a single processor, has six cores, but we're still going to run into minimum licensing because, remember, total cores per server, 16, as well as eight cores per processor, or rather, I, I keep saying eight cores. Really, I should say eight core licenses per processor and 16 core licenses per server. But you would start, you would still run into the, the minimum licenses. So the question becomes, all right, so um, if you're looking to purchase a server, what, you know, what would you buy? Well, if you intend on running Windows workloads on it, then I would probably buy something that, would that is at least as beefy as what you would have to have for um, for the minimum licensing requirement for for Windows Server. If I was wanting to run an on-premises server and I wanted to run Windows Server on it, I would not get the Dell T340. Just because you're 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 kind of you're wasting some licenses, you're going to have to buy 16 licenses anyway. Now, at the same time, where it could make sense is okay. So buying a beefier server, such as one of these options down here, that would be the most efficient license-wise might be way overkill for whatever your workload is. And so even though you would be inefficient with your licenses up here with, with these two servers for your workload, those servers may make more sense. And the amount of money it will take to buy the beefier server to be more... Um, more efficient license wise might might not make sense to, to to do that so again just like everything in IT you know the answer is it depends well you have to do your your math about your core licenses and figure out what does make sense so um, and then well I don't want to go too far on the tangent with this then the question becomes should you use Windows should you be um, using something else for your workload does it make sense to run a um, uh, if you have to have Windows, does it make sense running a VPS instance? So anyway, so these next few examples, um, this is going, uh, these configurations, this Dell T640, so Tower Server 640 with Xeon Gold 5220, a single processor with 18 cores. This is going to get beyond the minimum requirements. So to, so to, to license this properly, all physical cores have to be licensed. We got that checked off there. 
um, you're going to have to you have to buy eight core licenses per processor. Well, that's checked because this processor has 18 cores. We're, we're definitely going to be beyond the minimum for that. And then per server, per overall machine, you have to purchase 16 core licenses. Well, just licensing the processor itself is going to get us beyond that. So you would need to purchase 18 core licenses in total. So this is where the 16 pack might come in, um, in, in, in handy here. And this, I, I have not purchased a 16 pack they, they didn't exist the last time I was doing purchasing for uh, Microsoft licenses. But you have to do the math here and ask yourself, does it make sense to purchase nine two-packs? Two-pack, anyway. I'm, I'm a, a, a child of the 80s and 90s. To get exactly 18 licenses. Or does it make more sense to buy one 16-pack and then one two-pack to get that total of 18 licenses. That again, you, you know, you talk to your reseller and say, you know, show me the pricing difference between your 16 pack plus one two pack versus nine two pack or two packs of uh, core licenses. Now, this particular example here that I have in um, in italics, that is the um, the example for for my my viewer um, Shoeb, and if I have uh, butchered your name, Shoeb, my apologies, but um, the, the example that, that he asked about was a uh, server that had two, um, he, he, in, in his question he put socket, so I'm, I'm assuming socket is um, two physical processors and 18 cores per processor. So again, you gotta license all the physical cores. Um, two processors, so we have to buy at least eight core licenses per processor, but we have 18 cores per processor. We're gonna manage that and then again we have to have 16 minimum 16 core licenses per server we're clearly going to get that with a single processor since you have two processors you will be licensing you will be purchasing 36 core licenses and so again we have to do the math here does it make more sense to get um, 18 of the two packs or one of the 16 pack and then two of the two packs to um, to wait did I do that math correctly no, I did not do that math correctly. Oops. So I just realized on my spreadsheet here that that's going to give you, um, let's see, 16. That's going to give you uh, 20 core licenses. So um, this would be, to make this make sense, we'd have to change this here to, let's see, that would be 32 core licenses. And then we need four more to get to. 36. Okay, that's that's what I meant to to uh, put here. So two 16 packs plus uh, two two packs. I would imagine that um, it probably does. Uh, it probably would make more sense to get the 16 packs. I, I can't imagine Microsoft making that offering and it not like being a little bit, you know financially advantageous to to get that the the uh, larger pack of licensing. Um, so. To answer Shobe's question in particular, with that with the server that was described, you would have to license 36 license, or you would have to purchase 36 core licenses in some way to properly license Windows Server. And then again, if if you need to get more VMs beyond the two, assuming that you licensed um, Windows Server standard, you would need to buy another 36 core licenses to once again license that server for Windows Server standard. And the last example. That, um, that I have here. I just uh, went crazy and was looking at the some of their high-end, Dell's high-end rack servers. This is the R940XA. And I said, hey, I want four processors that are Xeon. Uh, man, my spelling is terrible with this. Xeon Gold 6230. These things have 20 cores per processor, so we would have 80 cores total processing pro 80 physical cores on the server clearly that's going to be beyond all of the minimums and if you had a beast like this and you wanted to run Windows Server on it you would be purchasing 80 core licenses at a, at a time and so um, again you know you do the math what makes more sense to, uh, between the two packs and the the 16 packs I want to make sure my math is right here that would be um, two that's, that's Determine that's 32 licenses, and then yeah, so so that that would be correct if you were using um, the the 16 packs. 
Um, I haven't seen the license, the pricing for 16 packs outside of, you know, you just go to, to, to CBW. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to, you know, rather than two of the 16 packs and four two packs, that would be eight licenses. If it makes sense to go ahead and purchase, um, purchase three 16 packs, anticipating like a hardware refresh at some point. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I, I would think that, that that wouldn't be the case. But to to summarize what you have here, this 16, the, this minimum has to be met. So if you are buying a, a, I don't necessarily say weak, but a less powerful server, keep that in mind when, when it comes time to licenses, license it if you're wanting to license Windows that you have to get the, the minimum. Beyond that, then you're you're simply licensing the total number of cores, and then you have to decide if it makes sense to get them in two packs, or or sixteen packs. So, some it, it can seem confusing, but if it, as in, in my experience with almost anything with Windows licensing, if you sit down and, and take the time to, to to think it through, it it generally will will make sense, even though you might have to you know do the math a couple of times just to 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 um, make sense of it so thank you for taking the time to watch as always don't hesitate to ask questions in the channel or you can head to ejsllc.com and do my contact form there i'm happy to answer uh what what i can with with some of the, the knowledge and, and experience that i have to show up hopefully this this answers your your question about the the core licenses and um as always, if you enjoyed the content of the video, not just show it, but anyone enjoys the content of the video, make sure you click like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you can be aware of when new content comes available. And I will see you the next time.